gut microbiota and gut microflora. What is that? In our intestine, there are large number of microorganisms which are living inside. Obviously, we have to increase the good bacteria and we have to decrease the bad bacteria. If you have good number of good bacteria, your digestion is going to be at top class. And if you want to attract the bad one, then it's very easy. Very easy you can do it. So gut microbiota and gut microflora. What is that? So gut here means our intestine, our digestive system, where we ingest our food and then the food get digested. And microflora or microbiota are the living organisms, the microorganisms which are living inside our gut. Yes, you heard it right. In our intestine, there are large number of microorganisms which are living inside. These are the bacteria, there may be fungi and you will be amazed to know that their numbers are so huge that they can outnumber the number of cells we are having in our body. So, they are huge in number. But then this gut microbiota or microflora that can be of two types. There could be some good bacteria and then there could be some bad bacteria. Bad bacteria are those who are basically making us sick, ill and creating a lot of problems. But good bacteria are those who are helping us in a variety of ways. So, let us talk about good bacteria because obviously we have to increase the good bacteria and we have to decrease the bad bacteria. So, bad bacteria we get it from the infection and all kind of bad habits that we have in our eating and hygiene and all kind of thing. But good bacteria inherently it is there in our body. But what we do in our lifestyle, we are so ignorant that we are killing the good bacteria by some mistakes that we do in our lifestyle. The biggest mistake that we can do to kill this good bacteria is to change our food habit in such a way that is not very conducive for it. We will talk about that in later phase. But let us understand what does this good bacteria can do for us. So, this good bacteria are very important because these good bacteria are going to help us in our digestive process. These good bacteria are going to work with our enzymes, digestive enzymes and it can make the digestion process very easy and smooth. If you have good number of good bacteria, your digestion is going to be at top class. Second thing, this good bacteria will also help us to enhance our immunity. If you have good bacteria in your body, your immunity system will be active and at very good position. It will be activated for, right? Third thing, this good bacteria will also help us to, you know, to, to grasp, to absorb lot of vitamins and nutrient in our stomach and intestine. You get my point? Stomach, I mean intestine mainly and then this good bacteria can help you to get nutrients out of the food. You know, if we eat some nutrient in the food, then body should accept it. But how body is going to accept? when you create a very good, conducive, positive environment inside the body. And for that, you need to have good bacteria in your body. It is like, it's like our own environment. In our own environment, we have two set of people. There are some people who are bad, there are some people who are good. And what we do? If we want to make our life better, then we keep good people more and we will try to get rid of the bad people. Same thing we are going to do. But then, if you want to have good bacteria, or good people in your life, then you will have to do something good. You have to take some effort. And if you want to attract the bad one, then it is very easy. Very easy you can do that. So, how can we do that? I mean, how can we attract, high, how can we increase the amount of good bacteria in our body? I tell you that first thing, what we eat, we need to be watchful what, on, what we eat on, right? So, there are two types of food that we can eat. And these foods can increase the number of good bacteria in our body. It can improve the health of our gut microbiota or gut microflora. And these foods are, these are the two categories of food, probiotic foods and prebiotic food. Now you can see like probiotic foods are yogurt, dahi, kefir, it is a fermented milk like thing, kimchi, it is a salad which is fermented one, fermented vegetables and meso and all kind of fermented things. 
right so nowadays you know that on the internet reels the fermented food and fermented drinks are very much in use because of this only because they are very good source of uh, bacteria itself because fermentation process is done by bacteria and in a normal circumstances in our household we also carry out fermentation right to make idli to make dosa to make dahi bada to make yogurt to make dahi right so this fermentation process is very common we do it and all the things that is coming out of fermentation that we use in our traditional kitchen these all are probiotic they have good bacteria in it so dahi is a very good probiotic probiotic means those food who are having live good bacteria if you eat that amount of this good bacteria will go it will settle down in your gut intestine and it will be part of your microbiota and microflora and they are going to do a lot of good thing perhaps that's why in our tradition whenever we used to go out for a, some good work like examination some journey or something our parents would put a spoonful of curd in our mouth right so just one correction it should not be spoonful it should be one ball full right so it should be ball full if you have one ball full of curd before you go out then it's all good for your gut health it's all good for your gut health and that will add directly it will add the bacteria the live bacteria into it and that is why it is called probiotic food another category is prebiotic food prebiotic foods they don't have any live bacteria in it but then if you eat this food then it will create a condition that is very much suitable for the bacteria which is living already there inside your gut and these are nothing but it has a fibrous food that we have fibrous food like all the vegetables you can see right seeds legumes oat banana berry all the things in our modern lifestyle what happened that we started using refined food less and less fibrous food and there the problem is i mean i know in delhi and kolkata and bangalore and all the big city of india momos are something that everybody is eating and if momo is not there in your city samosa is something everybody is eating but the problem is momos and samosa are maida they are refined food these are the refined food with very less amount of fiber into it and if you have no fiber in the body no fiber intake into the body then what will happen your good bacteria will not be happy with it you are not doing anything you are not taking any effort for the good bacteria and slowly they will be you know getting down in the number and then it will impact your digestion your immunity your well being your nutrition absorption right so all you need you need to add this fibrous food in your plate and you don't need to do anything just go in a traditional way eat salads eat green vegetables eat all the article that you can see out there right eat fruits and that is all you can do right so we got a lesson that everybody has this good bacteria in the body all we need to do that we have to increase the number increase the number by eating probiotic food directly and increase the number by providing prebiotic food which will create a very good environment so if you eat prebiotic food your bacteria is going to thank you and they will increase their number and then your health is going to be the next level right so that is all we have to discuss thank you thanks a lot